Hi, my name is Sushrut and today I will be presenting uh, our work on deep multi-agent reinforcement learning for autonomous driving. This work was done in collaboration with Sriram and Professor Crowley at University of Waterloo. This is the outline for today's presentation. Um, I will start with motivation of this work and some background. Uh, so the motivation of this work was to develop a cooperative multi-agent training algorithm for autonomous driving or any large-scale real-time training scenarios. Uh, and the environment which we use for uh, most of our experiments is a simulation of this uh, treadmill driving environment where we have multiple robots uh, learning to drive in harmony on a infinite uh, road which, which is the treadmill. Some of the properties of this driving environment is that the agents uh, receive a partial observation which only includes the closest agent uh, and the closest corner. Uh, the agents receive a large negative reward when crashing um, into an edge of the treadmill or with another agent. Uh, agents can communicate by sending uh, a maximum of two byte message and the message is discrete and one hot encoded. Only a single bit is on um, in any given message. Uh, agents can uh, take up to 24 different uh, discrete actions uh, this can change directions and ha provides agents with uh, multiple levels of acceleration and deceleration. Uh, the observation in the state space of this environment was purposefully kept quite large um, and is of, of the order of 10 to the 12. A uh, little background on uh, reinforcement learning methods. Uh, we start with DQN uh, because DQN is used as the baseline method for all the algorithms proposed in this the, uh, in this uh, paper. Uh, so we, in DQN, this is a general overview where we have a prediction network and a target network. Uh, and the prediction network is basically a deep neural network which predicts uh, a Q value for a given state action pair. And the target network uh, is used to, in conjunction with the reward received from the environment, is used to uh, generate the ground truth for the uh, same state action pair. And the difference between the Q values is considered as, as the error, which is used for training of the function approximators, which are deep neural networks in this case, and tuning their weights to improve the predictions. So some of the properties of DQN algorithm is that it's a model-free algorithm, uh, and uh, the learning is uh, highly dependent on the assumption that the transition matrix uh, is stationary, uh, which means that the probability of transition between uh, over time stays constant, uh, even though it, it can be a stochastic transition matrix. Uh, this assumption is lifted in multi-agent reinforcement learning algorithms, uh, which is why we need a separate suite of algorithms to deal with um, multi-agent environments. So uh, next I'll go, I will go over uh, some literature uh, in multi-agent reinforcement learning algorithms. I will go over centralized training uh, algorithms and some decentralized. So currently the literature has four, uh, three different types of centralized training algorithms um, and they can be spread into three different categories, uh, namely information sharing, where agents actively share information about the environment uh, or them or their own policy by sharing their own parameters or sharing the state information. The second scenario is communication based where agents can also share uh, messages which can be improved by training iteratively. Uh, the third one is similarity based a uh, similarity gradient updates in decentralized fashion. So uh, in this work we focus mostly on communication based models. In the bottom of this slide we have uh, some algorithms cur currently present in the literature which also use communication-based methods uh, to achieve multi-agent training. So the first one is DIAL. Uh, in DIAL, we have multi-agent, multiple agents training uh, in parallel uh, in a single environment. <clears throat> the agents uh, share discrete messages with each other. Uh, the messages, however, are trained by uh, passing back uh, continuous gradients from one agent to the other. Uh, and the gradients are calculated uh, by computing the residual uh, gradients based on the message input from the other, uh, uh, from the speaker agent. 
Similarly, in iterative message sharing uh, in IMS, we have uh, uh, back propagation to train the messages shared between the agents, except uh, a averaging function is used uh, before the messages are passed back to, before the messages are broadcasted back to the uh, agents in the environment. The averaging function allows the algorithm to have variable number of agents in the environment, uh, which could be trained in parallel. However, the downside is that now you require multiple loops of message passing between the agents uh, to uh, before each uh, discrete time step of the environment where an action could be taken by the agents. Next, we will go over some decentralized uh, methods used in MART. So the first one is cooperative distributed behavior cloning. This is one of the basic algorithms where we take a centralized, uh, centralized trained uh, policy using one of the previous techniques. And to achieve decentralized execution, we use behavior cloning to download the uh, centralized cooperative policy into individual agents to achieve decentralized execution. However, this could lead to divergence due to lack of exploration uh, in large scale environments. Uh, the second approach uh, in the literature is using a DQN with stabilized experience replay. Uh, this approach trains the agents uh, directly in a decentralized fashion and does not require any transition from centralized training methods to a decentralized execution regime. Idea is sample from the experience replay with a bias towards immediate past uh, and to sample the very old experiences less so as to keep the transition matrix as stationary as possible during training. However, such approaches require a large amount of parameter tuning, uh, which could be difficult in some situations. Next, we will go over some of the algorithms presented uh, in this paper. So the first one is multi-agent message sharing uh, network. So this one is an extension on dial uh, and IMS where messages are uh, generated using a message network and the messages pass uh, to a separate policy network, uh, which is used for generating action behavior actions in the environment. And the message network is kept separate uh, from the policy network. The message network is trained by using cumulative uh, gradients from policy networks of other agents. Message network is kept separate to achieve a separation of responsibility in this scenario, uh, because having a, the joint responsibility of generating a message and a behavior policy uh, on a single neural network adds additional constraints during training, uh, which could be hard to overcome uh, when uh, going for a optimal policy. Uh, the gradients uh, for policy networks are computed simply uh, in the same manner as regular DQN, where we have the prediction uh, minus the uh, ground truth, which is generated using a target network and the reward received from the environment. However, the gradients for the message network is the cumulative uh, residual gradients received uh, from uh, all the policy networks uh, where the message was an input. The properties of multi-agent uh, message sharing networks uh, is that we, we achieve same time message sharing. Uh, and so this eliminates any non-stationarity which could arise if there is a delay between the time step at which a message is sent and the time step at which a message is received. We also have a separate uh, message uh, generation network and a separate policy network, which uh, greatly improves our results as we will see in the results section. And the algorithm is able to scale to large scale environments uh, quite easily. So on this slide, we can see the algorithm for multi-agent message sharing network. Um, on line four, we have sampling of mini batch of transitions, which basically allows us to achieve of policy training as opposed to dial, which requires an on-policy uh, training regime. From line six to eight, we have the algorithm for generating the gradients for policy network and then uh, cumul uh, generate the cumulative gradients for the message network uh, using all the policy uh, network gradients uh, and apply the gradients to these neural networks. So 
over here we have a comparison for um, our multi-agent message sharing network with um, dial and ims uh, and also single agent dqn as we can see single agent dqn is the red line uh, and is flat uh, and the main reason is uh, dqn is not able to converge uh, in a multi-agent environment because of a non-stationary transition matrix dial and ims however are able to achieve a better score than DQN in our treadmill driving environment. IMS, however, uh, fails to um, converge and actually diverges. Dial uh, achieves a much better uh, score, uh, cumulative uh, reward than IMS and DQN. Uh, and we see that our algorithm, uh, multi-agent message sharing network, achieves the best cumulative reward out of all of them. The next algorithm we present in this thesis is multi-agent broadcast network, which is an extension uh, over multi-agent message sharing network, where we have a separate uh, message generation module uh, and a separate policy generation module, except the we use a centralized message generation network uh, with, and the message generated by it is, broadcast, is broadcasted to all the uh, policy networks and all the uh, agents and they can um, generate their own policy based on the environment observation and the message received from the broadcast network. So uh, one of the advantages over multi-agent message sharing networks uh, for broadcast networks is we no longer require a nested loop to uh, retrieve predictions uh, and we no longer require a nested loop for training of all the agents. Multi-agent broadcast network also provides the same time action uh, same time step action prediction for all agents. Uh, as you know, uh, as the complexity for uh, execution goes down from O of N to a constant. So separation of message and policy networks uh, still allows um, for a variation of uh, message types which could be generated as opposed to the IMS algorithm, uh, where using a mean um, or averaging operation uh, reduces the knowledge shared between the agents. And multi-agent broadcast network provides a linear space and time complexity in the number of agents uh, when compared to multi-agent message sharing network, which is quadratic. So here are the results of multi-agent broadcast network. Uh, which are presented in purple color and as we can expect because of the additional constraints on the message generation uh, which is shared between the agents we have a reduction in um, the cumulative reward achieved by multi-agent broadcast network uh, although uh, the final result is still a lot better than dial and ms ims algorithms Next, uh, we look at some metrics for multi-agent message sharing network, uh, sort of a deep dive into uh, why the algorithm performs better than all the other algorithms in literature. So the metrics we look at is uh, speaker consistency, which is basically a metric to which computes the mutual information between a speaker's uh, message, message policy and uh, a speaker's behavior policy. These instance core instantaneous coordination metric uh, is uh, computes the mutual information between a speaker's uh, message policy and the listener agent's behavior policy so it has a lot more value than speaker consistency as relation between an agent's uh, messages and the listener's actions based on the messages received from the uh, speaker agent and which also shows a cooperation um, because of the messages being shared between the agents. OP um, is computed based on the messages generated by an agent. A message input norm is the normalized value of the input parameters of the listener agent uh, to see if they are all zero or if they are uh, actually to see if they are all zero and actually ignoring the input values, uh, which would be the messages in this case from the speaker agent. Uh, and the last one is the cumulative reward when using white noise messages. So if the actual messages between the agents are replaced by white noise, does the reward go up or down or does it stay uh, the same? And as we see the cumulative reward does go down 
uh, when we did this experiment uh, with two agents and uh, we also have a high value for instantaneous coordination which means that the agents actually rely on the messages being shared between uh, each other uh, to improve the cooperative policy in the multi-agent environment. Uh, so next we look at the scalability um, of the multi-agent broadcast network. As we increase the number of agents on the treadmill, uh, what is the impact on the cumulative reward uh, we see? Uh, and as we see that um, the the red line for multi-agent broadcast network outperforms dial and IMS uh, in the scalability test for uh, the driving environment. Next, we look at the uh, inference time because real-time execution um, are centralized algorithms is very important. Um, and as we can see that um, uh, IMS and uh, multi-agent broadcast network have a linear inference time. It stays that way as the number of agents uh, are increased in the environment. Next, we have uh, decentralized execution in multi-agent reinforcement learning uh, environments. Uh, what we focus on is uh, how can we use the centralized algorithm um, and achieve decentralized execution uh, while maintaining the level of uh, cooperative policy we have achieved during centralized process. So uh, what we use is memory modules where the memory module uh, tries to uh, replicate the, the message policy of other agents um, using the history, using a history of uh, the transitions of the environment. Uh, and the mu uh, box in this diagram represents the memory module uh, and is trained using supervised learning uh, during the centralized training uh, phase. Uh, the gradient for the memory module um, is com uh, computed uh, by using the message received from uh, during the centralized uh, execution uh, during the centralized training and uh, the message generated uh, based on the uh, history of transitions uh, from the memory module. The uh, formula for computing the gradient update uh, for the memory module, uh, we basically use supervised learning during the centralized training phase. And which allows us to train the memory module in parallel uh, and it's trained using discrete messages um, but generates a continuous output um, because the, mess the uh, predicted message no longer needs to be transported over the wire. Here is the uh, comparison of the cumulative reward re achieved uh, by the decentralized uh, multi-agent reinforcement learning algorithms. Um, so as we can see, multi-agent message sharing uh, using memory modules achieves the best um, cumulative reward. Uh, we should point out that the uh, cooperative distributed behavior cloning, the green line, uh, actually has a different axis as it starts from uh, episode 4000. Uh, on the left side and that's because it cannot be trained in parallel and needs to be trained in serial after the centralized uh, training process has completed. Uh, the DQN with stabilized experience replay approach uh, does work well however due to uh, the short amount of uh, transitions we can sample from uh, it is not able to train uh, very fast. So in conclusion, in this work, we presented uh, two different uh, multi-agent reinforcement learning algorithms uh, for centralized training uh, using uh, communication, uh, communication between the agents. And we also proposed a, a decentralized uh, training a regime which could be used for achieving decentralized execution uh, in a multi-agent uh, system. Thank you. Uh, and these are the references for our work.